All right, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 145, a psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts, all who, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. With that, let's stand up and say good morning and happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Well, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? 
that is what I expected you to say. <laughs> Isn't that what we always say? How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. I ask my kids all the time, how was your school day? Good. How was practice? Good. How was your test? Good. That's it. That's all I get. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to our mothers that are with us. We simply want to say thank you for what you do. And you know, as, as we as a church, we always want you to know that we stand with you. If there's ever anything we can do to, to help you and to come alongside of you and support you, please speak up. Uh, we just, we appreciate you and the ministry that you have to the people that are, that are around you and we're just, we're grateful for you. So, thanks moms. Uh, this morning, I want to share with you, um, I want to answer the question, what is good? Yeah, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Well, I want to, I want to talk about that this morning. What is good? How do we define it? And how does that impact our lives. This week I've been thinking about what is good, what is bad, you know, the opposite of good. I don't, but I don't know about any of you, but I love Reese's peanut butter cups. They are good, right? Uh, if I thought of one candy that I think is bad, it's Mary Jane. Bad. Come on, are there any of you that like Mary Jane? Oh, no? Nobody? <laughs> They're horrible. They're bad. Uh, I, I love ice cream. Almost any kind of ice cream. And my family knows that uh, when it comes to ice cream, I'm super mature when it comes to my favorite flavors. I love birthday cake ice cream. Love it. It is good. It is good. I love most ice creams, except if there are... Nuts in the ice cream? Bad. Bad. In fact, butter pecan ice cream. I love butter pecan ice cream, but can't eat it because it has pecans in it. Go figure. Uh, some ice creams are good. Some are bad. Some candies are good. Some are bad. You know, as we look around us at society, it's probably pretty easy for some of us to define bad. Yeah, I spent a few moments this week kind of thinking about what is, what is bad around us? Something that I would suggest is bad. This is no laughing matter. Abortion. That's bad. Okay? Uh, in fact, I saw some statistics, the statistics this week that were just... Um, shocking to me. I don't know if you know how many children are aborted each year here in the United States, but it's, it's approximately 750,000. That's 2,000 a day. That's not good. That is bad. But it's actually worse. Do you know how many children are aborted across the entire world? 750,000 here. Across the world, the number is 73 million every year. 2,000 a day in the United States. 200,000 a day across the world. It's not good. It's bad. What else is bad? Well, sin. Sin is bad. I think we could all agree to that. Murder is bad. Anger is bad. Pride is bad. How many other things could we list? There's, there's a lot of things that are bad around us. Racism that still exists in our day, it's bad. Selfishness that I recognize in my own spirit, it's bad. Disease and sickness that is a product of of a fallen world. It's bad. It's evil. All of these things are bad. It's the opposite of good, right? So many things are bad around us. We've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. 
that we live in a world that if you just open your eyes, you can see there's so much evil around us. It's in that context when we're constantly bombarded with evil and bad that God, that God calls us to be good. Pray with me. Lord God, we stop here for a moment and we just ask, Lord, that you would move in our midst. Our God, I pray that you would open our eyes to see your truths in Scripture. Lord, open our ears that we may hear something that encourages and challenges us to live more on mission for you. Lord, open our hearts to consider new things. Lord, all of us come this morning with so much going on in our lives. Lord, help us to be in your presence, even in the midst of all this, this stuff that we're carrying. Lord God, we have already sang of your goodness. And we've talked about things that are good. We've talked about things that are bad. Help us to see your truths, Lord. God, I ask that in these moments that you might cause us to think differently. Help us to respond appropriately. Lord, we, like, we love your word. It is good. Use it in our lives to make us who you want us to be. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if there's one thing that I want you to hear this morning, this is it. God is good, and He calls us to follow Him in being good. Let me say that again. God is good, and He calls us to follow Him in being good. Micah 6, 8 is a passage that we've spent a little bit of time on this year. Pastor Pete has had a couple different sermons that have been straight out of Micah 6, 8. Pastor Pete chose this verse, this passage, for our verse of the year as a church. I don't know if you recognize that or not, but it has been chosen um, just for something for us to reflect on as the year goes along. And I want to just take a moment and make reference to Micah 6, 8, because it is the beginning of what the Lord has been teaching me and what I would like to share with you this morning. Micah 6, 8, you might remember the context. The people, or God asked the people, what, what, um, what could you bring to me as a, as a sacrifice? Thousands of rams? Is that, is that what you're going to bring to me? And the, the Lord says, no, that is not what is necessary. That is not what is required. That is not what I want. In Micah 6, 8, it says this. He has shown you, God has shown us, O mortal, what is good. It's that phrase right there that has been burdening my heart and my mind recently. And I want to share some things that I've been reflecting upon. God has shown us, all of humanity, what is good. And it continues, and what does the Lord require of you to be good? It says to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Now, I'm not going to re-preach Pastor Pete's sermon from last week. He did a great job of expounding upon those three truths, acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly. But when I think of those three terms, I think of what, what, has call, what has God called us to do? Who has God called us to be as those who are followers of Him? He does not ask for thousands of rams, as it says, but He says, I have shown you what is good. Now go be good. This is what God calls us to do. I want to uh, encourage you to turn back to Psalm 145 
I want to make a few comments about Psalm 145 that my wife read with you earlier. Psalm 145 is the passage that I sort of been camped out in recently as I've been reflecting on the goodness of God. When I think of Micah 6, 8, when it says that the Lord has shown us what is good, well, what were the people, what were the Israelites thinking when it said that He showed us what is good? Well, they were thinking about the fact that God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt. They were thinking about God's faithfulness. They, will, they were thinking about God's rescue. They were thinking about God's salvation. This is the God that saved them, and that was the good that He showed them. Psalm 145, I think, does a great job of describing or characterizing the goodness of God. And I want to encourage you some other time. I don't know how many of you brought highlighters with you this morning. Maybe there's a few, but some other time, I want to encourage you to just go to Psalm 145 and go through and highlight when it says something about God's character. I think it's a, it's a great um, experiment and project to undertake to help us define what is good. Psalm 145, this is what it tells us about our God, the same God that showed himself to be good in Micah 6, 8. It says this, that he is good beyond what we can fathom. I love that. The depths of God's goodness is so deep and broad that we can't begin to fathom how great it is. I like that. We could spend minutes and hours and days and weeks and months reflecting on the goodness of God and we still will not have captured its fullness. We're told that He is abundantly good. We are told that He is mighty and powerful. We, we often will call this the omnipotence of God. He's all-powerful, more powerful than anybody else, than anything else. This is the God who has shown Himself to be good, mighty and powerful. We're told multiple times in the passage that He is righteous like none other. We're told that, his, that he is a, there's a splendor of His majesty. We're told that God has done great deeds. We are told that God is filled with grace. He is gracious. This is our God. We're told multiple times in the passage that this great God, the creator of the universe, the almighty, all-powerful God, is compassionate to you and to me. How unbelievable is that truth? We're told that God is slow to anger. We are told that He is rich in love. We are told that this God is good to all people. We are told that He has a great kingdom. We are told that He has dominion over everything. He is trustworthy in His promises. Amen? He is trustworthy in His promises. What He says is true. What He promises is true. He's good. He is faithful. He holds up those who fall. He provides for those who are in need. He is generous, completely righteous. He is near. We call that the omnipresence of God. He is always there as we call out to Him. He is always near. He fulfills the desires of those who fear Him. He hears our cries. Amen? As, we, as our eyes well with tears and we are sad and in despair, we're crying out to Him. He hears us, the God of the universe. He saves. He watches over those who love Him. 
He is perfectly just. There's no goodness of God without the justice of God. He is wholly set apart unlike anybody else. This is our good God. When we talk about the goodness of God, I want you to to think of just a few principles. First of all, that goodness is defined by God's character. That's it. Now, I want to warn us. I, I want to encourage us to be extremely careful because our tendency in the flesh as people is to define good by our own standards or by some other standard on this earth. And that's just faulty thinking. That's not a good policy to live by. You see, if I try, and do, if I try to define good myself from my perspective, I am always going to be wrong. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I cannot define what is good, but I try all the time. I could say Reese's peanut butter cups are good, Mary Jane's are not, right? That's my own opinion. But when, we, when, we, when we're talking about what is good behavior, what is the good action that God calls us to, I cannot define that on my own, and I cannot look to alternative sources. God is good, and good is defined by His character. Let me give you an example. In one culture, something is good, but in another culture, it's not. It's bad. For instance, this is a little bit weird from my perspective, but if I was to burp, that's not good, is it? I was to come over to your house, sit and eat dinner, and then I would belch at the table. Ah, that's not good. <laughs> it's kind of gross. But in other cultures, as you may have heard, I believe it to be true in China. That's what I have read. It, it is very weird to me. But in China, apparently it's appropriate to burp after a meal because it gives uh, recognition to the chef who made the food. How weird is that? Right? That's bad. <laughs> well, see, that, that's comical, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, we cannot define good from our perspective. Good is defined by God. That is our only source of a definition, of a good definition of God's character. Psalm 119.68 says this, speaking of God, you are good, and what you do is good. Teach me those decrees. See, I want to learn from you, Lord God, from your example. You are good, and what you do is good. Psalm 100, verse 5, which Pastor Josh began our, our service with this, this morning, says this, For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. By the way, that song that we sang, Goodness of God, it says, you've been so, so good, right, all my life. Let me just take a, a, a moment and encourage you to reflect upon the fact that I get it, that he's been good in all of my life, but he's been good for all times, for everyone's life who has ever lived, right? His faithfulness and his goodness continues for all generations. He's good now, he always has been good, and he always will be good. This is the definition of good for all time. Nahum 1.7 says this, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Psalm 34.8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Psalm 107, 1 says, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And this, the goodness of God is threaded all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. God defines good. 
Oh, I am, I am prone to be influenced by the context in which I find myself. You, you may have heard this term that we have these people called influencers in our lives. I don't know how much time you spend on the internet or on different social media platforms, but we've now come up with this term. There are these people that are called influencers. Whether it's on Instagram and Snapchat or on TikTok or on and on it goes. People, their whole existence, their, their job is to influence us. And can I just be, a, be honest with you? I'm influenced, right? Some of them, I look at them, I think, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's bad. Well, that's good. But I am influenced. We are influenced by those that are around us. My friends, I'm encouraging us to remember that if we want to do good like God has called us to, don't define good by the context in which you find yourself. Don't be, don't understand the goodness, that, what goodness is by what you see on TV or you see on the internet or you hear from your friends. Please don't define good by what I say. The only definition of good is God. He sets the standard. God defines what is good. Secondly, not only is good defined by God's character, but being good is a byproduct of walking with the one who is good. So we're called to be good, but we can't be good without walking with the one who is good. And the more time we spend with a good God, the more likely our actions will be good. In Luke 18, 19, Jesus was interacting with those around him, and he, he said to a man, why do you call me good? No one is good except for God alone. Please, I want to be abundantly clear None of us are good. A while back, I was having a conversation with somebody about their salvation, and I asked them, how do you know that one day you will be with God in eternity? And their answer was, which is very, a very common answer, that I've been good. It's the wrong answer. If that's your answer... You're not getting into eternity with God because there is no one that is good. Psalm 14.3 says, there is none who does good, not even one. Psalm 53.3 says much the same. There is no one who does good, not even one. Romans 3.10 says, none is righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single human is not good. And you can't do enough good to get into heaven. But when we come to Christ and we place our faith in Christ alone, a byproduct of that faith, that saving faith, is good. Right? We come to Him in faith. That's the answer. When I ask, how do you know that you will spend eternity in heaven with God? Because I've placed my faith in Christ alone. That's the answer. But this morning we're talking about, well, when we spend time with this God that has saved us, when we have placed our faith in Him, and we commune with Him, we spend time with Him, goodness is a byproduct of that. If we want to be good like God has called us to be, then we need to spend time with Him because He is the one who defines good. God is in the process of making you holy, and you have not arrived yet. One day, we will each, as believers in Christ who have placed our faith in Him, we will stand before Him, and Colossians tells us that we will be seen as complete because the blood of Christ is over us. 
But right now, here on this earth, you have not reached perfection, and nor have I. But it's in this context that I'm called to be good. We choose to be good because God is working in us, and He causes us to do good. I like to think of, um, think of the analogy of a plant. I love to work outside in my yard. This year I'm trying vegetables for the first time. I don't know how it's going to go yet, but trying. But one of the reasons I love to work outside is because it reminds me of what God is doing in my life. The more I cultivate and I care for these plants, the more likely that their leaves will be green, they will not wither, and they will bear fruit. Right? It's the same thing for me when it comes to my faith and walk with Christ, and the byproduct of that walking is fruit. Psalm 1, you, like some of us are familiar with that. If we plant ourselves in the right place, if we are being nourished by God Himself, then our leaves will not wither and we will bear fruit. This is what God calls us to do. Galatians 5, I want to turn there. Galatians 5 says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit. See now, keep in step with the Spirit. Spend time with God. If you do this, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, the opposite of good. For the flesh, me, myself, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. The Spirit in me produces good. The flesh in me produces bad. They're in conflict with one another. There's a war going on. If we want to be good as defined by God and His character, then we need to spend time walking with Him. And as we do, the, the fruit, the good fruit, will be produced. And you know, as it's listed a few verses later, the fruit of the Spirit, love, right? Right? Gentleness, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are all characteristics of God, and as we spend time with Him, that's who we become. So good is defined by God and not by those around us. Being good is a product of walking with the one who is good. Next, being good blesses others. I want to turn to a passage very quickly. Matthew chapter 5, it says this. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Did you hear that? Being good blesses those around us. Let your light shine before others so that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. One time this happened in, well, many times, I guess. This happened in my life. I was doing some work in my yard. My father was there. Uh, I, we were in Haiti at the time. And um, a woman walked into our yard asking for help. Now, you may have heard me say this before, but that, ha that happened like every day when we lived in Haiti. And we were constantly needing to make a decision of who we were going to help and how we were going to be able to help. And it was a very difficult process, to be honest. And that day, as my dad and I were working out in the yard, this woman came up and started asking for help. And frankly, I was dismissive. I basically, I just spent just a moment recognizing that she was there, and I dismissed, and I just said, no, I, I'm not able to help. And I went on with my 
tasks. I don't even know what we were doing. But my dad said, um, what was that? What's going on? And um, I said, well, she, she needed help. And I just told her that we weren't able to help. And he said, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? Well, there was a lot going on. There was a lot of context. And, but frankly, in that moment, I recognized with my dad being the light, seeing his good response, I recognized that I was not doing good in that moment. I like to think of this passage, that, that's exactly what happened. See, when, when we're good, we influence others. My father made a good choice, and he decided that we should help this woman. And indeed, we did because of what my, my father's response. And I was convicted because I recognized I'd been selfish and I, I should have stepped up. But this is what happens. Being good blesses others. Not only did my father's choice to be good bless that woman, but it blessed me because I learned from my father. This is what we're told happens about being good. It blesses others. So good is defined by God. Being good is a byproduct of spending time with the one who is good, God. Being good blesses others. Next, being good blesses us. There is great reward. I don't think I need to explain that to you, but there is great reward in being good. In fact, here in Matthew chapter 5, it begins with what we call the Beatitudes. Blessed are you for this. Blessed are you for this. Blessed are you for this. Blessed are we for being good. Pure in heart, you are blessed as you are good like God. Deuteronomy 10, 12. I know I'm jumping around a little bit this morning, but Deuteronomy 10, 12 says this. You might recognize this, this language. It reminds us of Micah 6, 8. There's a reason. And now, Israel, what does the Lord ask of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. Did you hear that? I want you to live like this because it, it, is, it is for your good. This, God calls us to be good, to benefit me, each of us. I love that. It protects us as we're good. It encourages us. Boy, there's nothing like it when you stop for a moment and you do something good, right? We've experienced that. It blesses us. And last, good is defined by God. Being good is a byproduct of spending time with God. Being good blesses others. Being good blesses us. And being good is a step of obedience. Now, this has been threaded through all of what we've been sharing this morning. But let's be very clear that being good is being obedient to the one who is good. We are called to be good. Go back for, your, for a moment in your mind, Micah 6, 8. He has shown you what is good. And what does he require? Actually, I'm not certain that that word require is quite the best term. It kind of, it, it captures an idea. That there's a little bit of requirement, but it's more of a want this is what he is seeking from you. This is what he's asking you to do. Deuteronomy 10, 12 was saying that. What does the Lord ask of you? This is what he asks of us. That we should be good. God has called each of us to be good like him. We already saw Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine. That's a command. That's not a suggestion. 
Let your light shine so that others may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Romans 12, 21 says, Do not be overcome with, by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's a command. We're told, this is how I want you to live. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Let us not grow weary in doing good. We sang earlier about being prone to wander, right? Sometimes we get a little bit weary in doing good. Oftentimes because we're taking our eyes off of others and putting it on ourselves. But we do, we grow weary. And so scripture tells us, don't grow weary in doing good for in due season you will reap. Keep at it. Keep, keep working, keep fighting, keep being good because eventually that work that you're doing it will reap a harvest if we do not give up. In Galatians 6.10, So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Just like Psalm 145 said that God is good to all people, here we're told it again for us. Let us do good to everyone. And especially those who belong to the household of faith. I like here how it separates it. It says that we should be good to all people right? You're going to come in contact with lots of people throughout this coming week. Be good to them. But it, we're also told that we should be good to one another, especially good to one another. There are opportunities to serve and to be generous and to be good to and with one another right here in our place. Ephesians 2.10, and I close with this. For we are God's handiwork. God created you. He formed me. Why? We were created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. This is who God has called us to be. And these good works that God is calling us to do, He's offering them up to us on a platter. It says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, very quickly, I said we were, you know, prone to wander and do not be weary in doing good. We will not walk into those opportunities of being good if our eyes are not open, our ears are not listening, our hearts are not in the right place. We will not recognize the opportunities that God is laying before us in order to be obedient in being good. In just a matter of moments, we're going to pray, and I'm going to say amen, and we're all going to stand up. God has opportunities for you being good. Are you watching? Are you looking for them? Because they're going to come fast and furious. This is what the Lord has called us to do. This is who God has called us to be. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says this, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. We live in a wicked world and we're very quickly defining good by the context in which we find ourselves, but rather God is the definition of good. Test everything. Be aware of what's going on around you. Stop being influenced by this world and be connected with the true definition of good. Spend time with Him. God defines good. Being good is a byproduct of spending time with Him. Being good, it blesses others. It blesses us. It's obedience. So now as we go today, let's be who God has called us to be. Let's, who, let's be who God has crafted and formed us to be, to do good works. Open your eyes, open your ears. I promise you're going to see them because that's what Scripture tells us. Let's pray. Our God, thank you that you set up for us in the Word of God the definition of good Lord, thank you for Psalm 145. Thank you that it, it helps us to understand your good character. 
Lord, thank you that you have set before us an example of who you want us to be. Lord, you tell us to let our light shine. You tell us to do these good deeds, these good works. You tell us in Micah 6, 8 that these are the things that you want from us. Not that, you know, the thousand rams, but you want us to offer to you in worship doing good. Lord, help us to do so. As we leave from here today, open our eyes. Let us recognize what you're doing around us, Lord. Let us see what you're doing and help us to join you. Lord, as those opportunities come this week, I pray that you would give us a spirit of willingness, of selflessness, of humility. Lord, help us to to be obedient. Now as we go from this place, may your name be blessed. May you be glorified in our works. Lord, we love you. Watch over us, Lord, as you've promised to do. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed.